Hey YouTube, today we're going to be setting up a Windows development environment using Oracle's VM VirtualBox Manager. For this tutorial, I'm using VirtualBox version 7.0.10, but current latest at the time that you're watching this video should also be sufficient. So first what we're going to do is we're going to pop over here in the, the VirtualBox Manager and we're going to click new for a new VirtualBox machine. Uh, make sure you're in guided mode. It will be easiest that way. And let's go ahead and name our virtual machine. And for my purposes, I'm going to be using it primarily for Windows development tutorials. So I'll be calling it Windows Dev, but any name will work here. So next, we'll want to select the location on the file system where the VM files will reside. I recommend a folder that has at least 60 gigabytes of space. All right. And next, if you haven't already downloaded uh, the ISO image, let's do that. Okay, so you'll want to come to this page for the Windows 11 download. And what you'll want to do here is select download Windows 11 disk image, the ISO for x64 devices. So we'll select Windows 11 multi edition ISO and hit download now. It's going to validate the request and ask for you to input the language of the OS that you'd like to download. So we'll put in English and confirm. And from here, we'll have a 64 bit download button for the actual ISO image. So let's go ahead and click that and download the image. Once you have the ISO image downloaded, let's come over here to the ISO image selection and just select the download location from here, I'm going to select Windows Pro and click Next. Here, let's set the username and password for our VirtualBox account. I'm going to use Windows Dev again. And if you have a product key, this is where you will enter it. Let's hit Next. Here it's recommended that you have between four uh, to eight gigabytes of memory. I I personally like to go a bit higher because I have a, a large enough system to do so. As far as processors, you want to give it at least two and make sure that enable EFI special OSs only is selected. Here's where you're going to create your virtual hard disk. The disk size is the maximum space that VirtualBox will allow the drive to grow to once you're operating within the virtual machine if you've selected the virtual hard disk. If you select to pre-allocate the full size, all that will do is completely block out that space on the hard drive rather than have a dynamically growing up to the maximum virtual hard disk. Let's go ahead and select next. Once this is done, let's select finish, but we're not quite ready yet. Let's go, let's cancel the power up, head over to settings. Once we're in settings, we want to do a couple things. Let's go to storage and here on this disk image, we want to select live CD DVD. We want to choose a disk file and we want to make sure that we select our ISO image. Once that's done, we're actually going to, it, it didn't kill the machine, so we're gonna need to power off the machine. All right, now that it's powered off, let's go to display. And for video memory, we want to select the full memory. We want to make sure VBox SVGA is selected, and we want to ex enable 3D acceleration in the extended features. Select OK. Once that's done, let's go ahead and hit start. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And if you see the screen, then that means that the setup was correct and the installation will take it from here. And here over the sped up installation footage, I want to just briefly discuss a couple points on the importance of using virtual machines in your development process. There are several benefits to using a virtual machine over using your standard compute. 
one instance is that it's actually safer for the compute environment and that changes you make to the system will have no risk of destroying your current PC environment. And in the event that something happens to your development environment, you can restore from a virtual box snapshot much easier than you could restore your actual OS from a backup image. Uh, another advantage that it has is just agility and speed over the standard development process. It's much easier to recover uh, and it's a lot easier to migrate your workflows from a, an image to some kind of DevOps pipeline rather than trying to migrate your workflow from a desktop to that same pipeline. And now that we have the functional VirtualBox environment, there's still a couple steps that we need to do. So the first is if you go to the window and you select uh, devices, insert guest editions CD image. This is going to install a bunch of VirtualBox software onto the image to allow it to behave a lot more naturally to the user. For example, if you were to maximize the window right now, the OS has no actual display scaling to scale up along with the rest of the window. So what, what happens when we select devices, insert guest editions, CD image, we come here to file explorer and we see that it has mounted a virtual disc onto the image, which contains the windows editions. Let's go ahead and run VBox windows editions, AMD 64. And we'll notice another issue. It says you need administrator rights to install or uninstall the Oracle VM virtual box guest edition, which leads us to a following issue, which is that the admin account is actually currently hidden. So what we'll want to do here is open up PowerShell and we'll want to type shutdown slash R for restart and slash O for advanced options. And it gives you this notification and we wait for the computer to restart. All right, now the process is starting and the computer is rebooting. Now that we're here, we'll select Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and we'll select Startup Settings. Now we'll click Restart. And once this restarts, it should give us a numbered menu and we'll click four or whatever the enable safe mode option is for you. All right, once the virtual machine has loaded into safe mode, we want to go to the start menu, select our username, and then we'll click on administrator now that the admin account is visible. The password for the administrator account should just be the same password which you set for your user account on the machine. Once you log in, it is going to run the first time initialization on the admin account. So we'll just wait a few minutes while this completes. Once this is done, we'll hit uh, Windows key plus R to open the run menu and just type CMD. This will open the command prompt in which we'll type net user administrator slash active colon yes. The command completed successfully. So now we all type shutdown slash R to restart the machine. And what we'll want to do now is go to the start menu, click on our username, and we should see the admin account available. We'll go ahead 
and log over to our admin account. Once the admin account has fully loaded, let's go ahead and go back to devices, insert guest edition CD image, and then we'll open up Windows Explorer. We'll find the mounted CD image and attempt once again to run VBox Windows Editions AMD64. We'll hit next. Default installation location should be fine. And click install. Once the install has completed, let's click finish to reboot now. Now that we've loaded back into our virtual machine, let's go ahead and go up to view in the toolbar and select adjust window size. We'll maximize the display and it should adjust automatically to a full screen display. Next we'll hit view, go to full screen mode and hit switch. Now we have a functional Windows 11 development environment running in VirtualBox. We've solved the issue of the missing admin account and we've installed VirtualBox guest editions to be able to maximize our VirtualBox and do things like add mounted folders from the host machine. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe, hit that like button, and stay tuned for more tutorials. Coming up soon will be a tutorial to bootstrap your dev environment with Python and Golang. Thanks for watching.